Okay, now I have eight equations. Things are a little out of line because of the space that I had to use here. So I'm going to fix that in a minute, but let's see what we can do. Okay. Um, first of all, I1 equals I2. Okay. So I'm simply going to replace every I1 with an I2. Now, when I do that, I want to move these over. And of course, if you're doing it on paper rather than a chalkboard, you're going to wish that you hadn't done what I did and put two separate symbols for the same kernel, I1 and I2. Okay? Uh, but I'm going to move this I1 over to where I2 is to make it an I2. Okay? Now we see that that eliminates the first equation essentially. Okay? Because I've used that information. So now I've only got seven variables and I just kind of cross out the first equation. Okay? Now we can see that if I just follow standard row reduction type process, which is usually the easiest way to do this by hand, using the first equation or the second, I can wipe out all the I2s except that one, right? Okay? So well, I've got them in order here. It would be a little easier to switch these two because this one only has three variables. Okay? But it's easy enough to do what we do here. So we just wipe out the I2s. Okay? Now, of course, we've got an I2 here. We've still got an I1 here, right? But an I1 is the same as an I2. So... That's going to give us 14 of these, right? Now, that would really be a negative 14, but I'm going to change all my negatives to positives because we need all the negatives. Okay? So now, you see, I can wipe out I2, right? And then... This one's going to have a leading term of I3, so I can easily wipe out the I3s, okay? Including this one. Um, anyhow, you can see that the way these things are spaced out and so forth, it's not going to be that hard to row reduce this thing. We can immediately get it down. Of course, you can do it by substitution. You know, solve this for I2 and substitute that and so forth. Well, you can solve for I5 pretty easily, and then you get I3 from there, right, and start going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we get to I5, you probably want to do that, except, well, yeah, you, yeah. we know what I5 has to be. Right. Okay. So the process is just a process of identifying independent loops, nodes, writing down the equations, making sure you've got enough. And then you probably have an extra equation, like we haven't written the equation down for what I called loop four. It's off the screen. But we can then substitute our solutions into that loop and make sure that everything works. Okay? Um, Okay, so that's the process. Now, what if we have the silly capacitor in here? What equation do you get for that loop? Uh, 